I am going to show you the switch function in DAX and when you should use it. I'm using a Titanic data set and let's take a look at the data. It gives us a list of passengers who survived different dimensions such as class and fare. And a switch function is much like an if function, but when do we use them? Um, for something like survived, uh, we have one for survive and a zero if we wanted to write a quick if function to give us the wording. We could just go to our calculations table, which is just a table I created to keep a track of my calculations. And I could say if. And we do selected value. And we have our survived equals one. Then we want to say survived. Let me close that off for a selected value. If selected value equals one, we know survived else perished. Now there are only two values in that column, and I'm just going to call this survived two. There's only two values in that column, and if I bring the names out, and I use the first survive, we can see that one and zero. And if I bring in my if statement, survive two, we can see that matches up nicely. For switch, a switch is the same as an if function, just formatted easier. The advantage for switch comes for embedded if functions. So let me just show you switch with this. Let's do survive three just go to new measure and then i'm going to use a switch function switch and it says give us the expression the same expression we use for if selected value what are we what's the value we want survived now this is where the syntax changes first let's say the first value is what? Zero. The result is, oh, so let's do the first value is one for survive. And then we write survive. And then result one, second value is zero. And that means perished. And let's format this a little bit better. So you can see what I'm doing. So you can see it's a much cleaner syntax. But it's going to give us the same result. So I'm going to go to survived three. Oops. Save that. Bring that in. And we have the same results, okay? So that's no difference, a little bit different syntax we switch, but the advantage comes in when we start to look at embedded ifs, more than just one. And let's get rid of these two values and let's take a look at embarked. So if you see the guide here, this gives me all the definitions. So we go down to embarked and we see we have this stands for port of embarkation and where this actually happened. And if I bring in embarked, we can see the abbreviation for that. And I created an embedded if statement. So we have three if statements. And you can see this is quite a lot of text. So we would be we would benefit from using switch because it's an easier way and a cleaner syntax. So 
but you can still achieve the same thing. So I'm just going to pull this Embark 2 in. Now we are going to use switch for that. So I'm going to create a new measure, right click, go to new measure. I'm going to go in and create this. Let's open this up a little bit. I'm going to go down the line and I'm going to say switch. We know we want that selected value embarked. Now we have our column name, comma, let's go down. And we know the first value is C. And the result is I believe it's Q. Queenstown is S, and the next result, I will keep it separate, and then now we want to give that last else a part of our, that represents our else part of this. Let's give that unknown. And we know we need to close that off. And if we bring that in, yes, Southampton was one word, as I thought before. If I bring that in, let's pull this out a little bit. We go in the embarked, and we just say, okay, well, that's one word, at least in this example. It probably should be two. But let's just make them even. So that is a reason to use switch. There is a different option for switch. If we create something, let's say if we go to our age column and we can see that this is a scale. So it's not, it's not a static or constant value. We do need to change the function a little bit. And I create an if function greater than, let's say, 17. We're going to call that person an adult. Else, very easy. We call it H2. I wrote that on one line because it's just very simple. Um, and we can bring that in. And we go to age two, adult and child, and we bring the age in. Let's just flip these a little bit. There we go. So we can see adult and child. If we're going to use switch, it's a little bit of a different syntax when you don't have that constant value. And then in this case, let's open this up. I'm going to go to... Start my switch statement. Now, because we are scaling things and it's not a constant value, you have to add true. So if something is true, it happens. So true is the first part of that. And I'm going to say same thing. Selected value. And we're going to do age. And it is greater than 17. We call this age three. And we just click that, bring age three in. And you can see we get the same result. So those are the two different ways to use a conditional if and an embedded if. I hope that helps.